Do you ever feel that YouTube guides aren't in depth enough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution for you and it is GameLeap. GameLeap is an educational video platform that helps you get the most out of Dota. Each hero is cleverly devised into special courses with lots of videos which help you master all the finer points of how to play a player really well. And it's done by 7K plus MMR players. And don't forget, if you sign up for GameLeap, not only does it help you win more and get your MMR up, it also supports my channel. Hello guys, this is ZXYC here and today we're going to be talking about item builds for Ricky. So when it comes to starting items, their go-to will most likely be Tangos, an Orb of Venom, and then you know, just some support items to help out your team. These support items will most likely be wards, just a few, you know, one or two obs or maybe uh, one or two sentries or, or a mix of the two, but nothing too much. You can also buy a TP scroll. Buying a TP scroll is actually really helpful for a hero like Ricky. This is due to the fact that you can just TP right away to a tower or a lane or a shrine and get a deep ward down. These wards are almost impossible to counter because you're TPing to a lane. You can be anywhere realistically. The enemy team has no idea where you are and you just place these obs while invisible because the only way for them to actually counter it is to just guess just straight up just put a sentry down and guess that you place there just place a little bit off of normal areas and you should be fine the other nice part is when you tp if you want to place a really deep ward right beside their tier like let's just say for example in your short lane you want to place a ward just beside their tier one like all the way in the corner beside their tier one a good deep lane ward like that that's really hard to counter all the time if you want to place that with any other hero you'd have to smoke just to place it with ricky you don't have to so you save a smoke it's pretty nice you just go in and just place that word and move on so starting items most of the time tango or venom maybe a tp you know some some words if your other support bought all the support items and you don't really need to buy anything else occasionally you can go boots first so same thing tango boots first you know just whatever else with the rest of the gold and uh just buy orb of venom as your next item so you'd still have Orb of Venom, but that way you just manage your gold better, you get a faster boots, you could run around the map faster, still place the wards. You should still be past the wards regardless of what you buy. The other support should pass the wards to you, you should be the one placing them. So when it comes to early game, your go-to item will be phase boots. Phase boots is super helpful, it helps you chase people really well, it helps you move around the map faster. And just remember, you can use it without breaking invisibility. So even if you're running across the whole map, you'll be phase booting whenever it's up. You'll move faster across the whole map and you still don't break invisibility. Really useful. Just a very solid item on Rikimaru. After phase boots, you probably want, you know, Wraith Band, Akilla, that stuff. Really useful items at that point. Akilla just gives you really good raw stats and the mana regen is really nice for you. Just don't forget, if you did pick up boots first, pick up the Orb of Venom next. Uh, Windlace is also a good item for you. Just extra movement speed, it's like, why not? Magic Stick is decent. 200 investment for uh, pretty much consistent mana. Whenever there's a fight, you'll always have mana to cast your spells, so that's always a nice pickup. Raindrops isn't as good, it's pretty expensive for what it does. You can always just play around all the magic heavy stuff. The, the mana regen, consistent mana regen is nice, so you can always pick up a raindrop if you want. It's not a bad item. It's just, um, I mean, it's 225, it's a consumable. It does slow down your other items compared to what it gives you. Most of the time, it'll skip raindrops, but if you're against maybe magic heavy lineup, you can decide to get it. In the mid game, there's a lot of core items that you definitely want. Diffusal is the core item that you want. You always go Diffusal. It's just super, super strong, super powerful. You use it in conjunction with your Cloud or with your Ultimate. You can even Diffusal ult each person super slowed inside your Ultimate. And don't forget, your Ultimate does have all your attack modifiers. So every time you ulti, everyone getting hit will have their mana burn. They'll also get dealt that extra damage. So Diffusal, very solid on him. After Diffusal, Basher, again, same thing, very solid. With your ultimate, you're just bashing everyone in AoE. Just a very good uh, pickup. So the Fusal Basher, there's situational items like BKB. Depending on the team, if they have a lot of magic damage, if they have like stuff like Zeus, you can just pick up a BKB, go on him, end up killing him. Zeus can't even save himself if you get on top of him, because what are his save items, right? There's Yules, there's Ghost Scepter, they both can be purged with Diffusal. So they'll have a lot of trouble dealing with you. Yasha is an okay item. Just as a value. Like when you look at Yasha just as value, it's probably one of the most cost-efficient items in the game. What it gives you is an agility hero, especially like Ricky. That movement speed is nice. All that agility gain is nice, especially with backstab. So it ends up being a lot of uh, value just for a 2,000 gold item. 
Don't forget to also level up your Diffusal Blade when it's running low. So what I like to do with Diffusal 2 is I'll buy the scroll. So before picking up the scroll, I'll lock my Diffusal, the original Diffusal. Have the scroll in my backpack, like overlap the charges. Use up my Diffusal charges. As soon as I'm done using them up, I will unlock my Diffusal, instantly upgrading my Diffusal to level 2 because my scroll was in my backpack the whole time. So the minute I unlock it, level 2 and I can start casting it again. Keep using it. So it's pretty strong to do. If you pick up the level 2 Diffusal early, just make sure you have it in your backpack and make sure your original Diffusal is locked. Blink, very strong for Ricky, of course, due to the fact that it just increases your survivability. You can un The main reason is, of course, you can ulti and then you can ulti, you're invulnerable, you're hidden, you can't be targeted. Three seconds, your Blink is up, Blink right out of the ultimate. It'll become a lot, lot harder to kill you. At the same time, you can also get deeper with it. So you can blink, blink strike or something like that, get really far in. Or vice versa, blink out, blink strike, get even further out. So it's just a very good maneuverability item that lets Ricky get in and out of fights very easily. And at the same time, it kind of gives him the puck effect of face shift blink. Why blink is so good on puck, face shift blink is just really, really strong. Same thing here. Tricks of the trade blink, really, really strong. So blink is a very good survivability item. Solar Crest, of course. You're a physical based hero, you just get a lot of extra armor or minus armor. And remember, you are still a support, so you can just solo crest your cores. So solo crest is definitely also a really good mid game item to pick up. But just remember, Diffusal Basher, these items are really, really strong. So, whenever you're deciding on solo crest, you have to decide is it better than Diffusal and Basher? And if you do have already Diffusal and Basher, is it better than BKB at that point? Because if you have Diffusal and Basher, you're already so late into the game. Is BKB your next item? And if not, is Blink your next item? And if not, like you have to consider all these stuff, that's okay. Because he has so many good items. If all these items aren't as good as Solar Crest this game, then go ahead and pick it up. Because Solar Crest is just really strong still. So for the late game, of course, you can see there's a lot of mid game items. So even if you are in the late game, you'll still be picking up these mid game items because they're so good. You'll just get multiple of them. So you'll go Diffusal, Basher, BKB, you know, whatever. Diffusal 2. And you'll, you'll be farmed, but you still have all these items. So for late game, you'll probably still be picking these items up. But there's always Abyssal. Just level up your Basher into Abyssal. It just gets a lot better. There's Lotus Orb, just to save teammates. You can upgrade the Yasha that you had from before into an SNY or a Manta. Uh, Manta isn't that good on him. The more the, Because his illusions aren't that strong, they're just really not that powerful. He doesn't have the best stats gained. His illusions just don't do that much. Just remember, they are invisible and they do have backstab. So if you do get Manta... The only time I'd get it is if I'm against heroes that I can dodge stuff with. So Venge Stun, I can dodge it with Manta. Or Purge myself is really strong. So then I'd get Manta, right? Like there's global and I just want to take it off. So at that point I get Manta, but normally I'd rather just get SNY. It's just more stats. Just a lot better with the Yasha. You already have the Yasha, just get just get the SNY. It's a lot cheaper, stats are a lot better, you get the MAME as well. Pretty good. You know, Butterfly, MKB, Bloodthorn, Lincolns, Maelstrom, all these items, even Deso, they're all super situational. I wouldn't really recommend them because of the other items that exist. And if you're somehow that farmed, then go ahead. But <laughs> most of the time, you won't be able to afford these luxurious items. They're just too, too expensive. So that's pretty much the general build. Of course, there's Agnums as well. Ags is a super situational item. It's probably one of the more underrated ones in terms of Agnum upgrades for what it does for Ricky, especially the situation because it, it fully, fully depends on your team and your heroes. So if you have a hero like Storm, you can just get an Ags after you already have your core items. The like core items always outweigh the Ags. Once you already have all your core items, you can pick up an Ags, just get in your Storm. Your Storm is zipping around and stuff. You're constantly dealing with all that damage. You, you end up dealing so much damage. And uh, Storm is going to be consistently moving you on top of, let's just say, their supports. He's jumping the back line. Uh, your ultimate is just going off, dealing ridiculous damage to them, end up killing them so easily. And it lasts a very long time, 9 seconds. And even if Storm dies, you're still going to be on the floor with your ultimate going off. You're, you don't just come out. Your ultimate always will last 9 seconds unless you cancel it. So just to generalize, normally it'll be Orb of Venom and Tangos, some support items. Maybe you'll TP to the lane, you'll always be placing the wards. Face Boots, Aquila, you know, Wind Lace, normal stuff like that. Then you'll transition into Diffusal, Basher, maybe even a BKB. Blink is always a good pickup. Solar Crest is a decent pickup. And then maybe you'll transition into a Yasha, into an SNY, or maybe upgrade your uh, Basher into an Abyssal if you need to insta stun someone like a Ember. 
So as always, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below. In our next video, we're going to be talking about the early game for Ricky.